Hello, Dean Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Today I want to talk about education. I'm sure everybody knows that there's a lot of discussion going on these days among well, all kinds of parties, the federal government, the state governments, the local governments, the mayors, the governors, the Congress, just about anybody you can think of about education, but especially I would think the oh, and doctors too, the medical professionals who all seem to be saying, or all the doctors are saying. In fact, there was a very interesting interview. Uh, an MSNBC host was very disappointed. He asked whether the schools should reopen. He asked a number of doctors, would you send your own kids back to school? They unanimously, all of them said yes, they would have no problem. They would be happy to send their kids back. This host was clearly, you could see on his face, clearly disappointed. He was expecting a different answer because our Democratic friends want to keep the schools closed, just like they want to keep the economy closed. They want to have a bad situation that will defeat Trump in November. It's perfectly obvious. But getting back to the schools about whether the school should open, whether the kids should go back, I have mixed feelings about it myself. Obviously, kids have to be educated. A lot of kids are being homeschooled, and we know from past experience that homeschooled kids do very, very well, better than publicly educated kids. And then you have charter schools, you have private schools, you have all these alternatives. You also have the argument that the parents, some of the parents work, they have to get back to work. Both parents work, you can't just leave the kid at home. That seems to be an argument for opening the schools. Also, if it were up to me, fathers, or well, let's be modern, one parent could work, doesn't have to be the father, but one parent would work and the other one would homeschool the kids. I think that would be fantastic. I think a national curriculum or national educational materials being available to parents to get online to teach your kids, I think that would be really great. And then there could be after school or after homeschooling clubs, ways for kids to socialize because it's important for kids to meet other kids. But the problem I have with just sending the kids back to school is, and I'm only really talking about the public schools, is that the state of education in this country is so bad, number one, in terms of what they're learning, but number two, they're being indoctrinated. They are basically, in many cases, indoctrination centers and daycare centers. You really think about it, you parents who have kids, how much time do you spend with your kids during the week, Monday through Friday? How much time do they spend in school with their teachers? I think you will find that the teachers have more contact, more time, and therefore potentially more influence with your children than you did, which is why, well, you have unions too, teachers unions, and they contribute to Democrats, but also you have a lot of people on the far left who do not want kids being taught anywhere other than in a government-run school because that's what they want. They want your kids educated by the government to be indoctrinated, not to, as it was when I was a kid, not to learn why we are such a great country, but the opposite to learn to hate this country and that all we're about is slavery, yada, yada, yada. So what, oh, and let me add another thing because you will find out if you talk to foreign exchange students, you can go on YouTube and you can probably find some interviews. I remember seeing one particular video, maybe more than one, but foreign students who come to study in our country, they will tell you how much easier our schools are than theirs. And I think that especially is true when you compare our schools to schools in, say, 
China, where they have a much more rigorous education curriculum, we have to compete with them. It really hurts us not to have education as good as these other countries have. In fact, I remember a particular personal experience going way back many, many years to when I was in college. I had a friend, she was a refugee. She came to this country as a refugee from Hungary. This was when the Soviet Union was still around and was still dominating all these Balkan countries when Hungary and Czechoslovakia, which doesn't exist anymore, of course, it's the Czech Republic and it's Slovakia. But at that time, Czechoslovakia, all these various countries, they were in the Warsaw Pact. They were all communist countries. She was a refugee. She was an engineering student and she was required to take a humanities class because that's, well, it's true of everybody, or it was at that time, who knows these days, maybe you don't have to take, in fact, I have heard that you don't have to take, say, Western civilization at all. That was a required course when I was in school in the humanities, but even though you might be in a technical field, you did have to take humanities courses about art and music and English to uh, meaning English literature, not the language, though you did also have to take a foreign language. You had to become a well-rounded student. The point I'm getting at though is that she was an engineering student. She did math and engineering. That was her focus. She had to take uh, humanities class and she had to take an art appreciation class. She was in this art appreciation class and the teacher was talking about paintings, describing paintings, and this professor was surprised, was amazed that because some of the students were just learning about these paintings for the first time, but she, an engineering student, knew all the painting. She knew every single one because that's how well-rounded her education was. And she told me how much easier the schools are here compared, and this is even back then, we're talking about the 1970s. We're talking about the early 1970s. I graduated in 1973. So it's to be like 1971, 72. But she was talking about how much easier the technical courses were. Never mind that she knew all those paintings, but also the technical courses. And she told me that she would, for instance, learn in math back in Hungary. And she, I, I'm sorry, I keep saying Hungary. Romania. She's from Romania, but she was Hungarian, ethnically Hungarian. The ethnicities and the borders don't always match there. In fact, my own father is an was an immigrant he he died many years ago he was hungarian but he was born in the ukraine in a little town called munkachevo which you can look up i'd like to visit someday but she was a Hungarian, but from Romania. She was actually from Transylvania. That might explain why I only saw her at night. I'm joking. I would see her during the day, obviously, in college. I don't think she was a vampire. Could be wrong. But she was very nice. She was a very nice vampire and a very attractive vampire, too as vampires go. But getting back to education, what can we do about this? Because our kids have to be educated and they are not getting the proper education. One suggestion from the Secretary of Education, DeVos, was to give the money instead of giving federal aid to the schools. This is something I've always agreed with or believed in, give it to the parents. Let them decide then where to spend the money to which schools to send their kids. As it is now, you have to pay out of your own pocket. There are these voucher programs, there are some, and they are always oversubscribed. You would have, say, a thousand or maybe 500 slots available and 10,000 parents I'm talking about minority parents and poor parents in distressed areas, and they would just sign up in droves and just be 
begging, pleading, trying, doing whatever they can to get their kids into these charter schools or into these private schools. But you still have to decide which school to send these kids to and you have to pay for it in most cases yourself while simultaneously paying taxes, property taxes that go to education for public education. But at the very least, we want to have the public schools be better. That would be ideal. So here is my idea. Here is my suggestion that any school that gets federal aid in order to get that aid must tape, videotape the classes, must videotape the classes and then put them online. They must videotape the classes in real time and then put it online afterwards. So if you have the housewife working at home, have the laptop computer sitting on the kitchen counter or the cell phone, and you can see what your kid is learning. You can see what these teachers are teaching your kids and you can complain if you don't like what they're being taught. You, you can take them out of the school and then you can also go online and look at what the other schools are teaching and I would have private schools and charter schools doing the same thing. They would want to do this anyways even if they're not getting federal aid to compete with the public schools. Then the parents could go online and the reason I say also put it online because if you're a working parent you work all day but you can come home at night or on the weekend and you can play back the tapes and watch what your kids are learning. And don't talk to me about some kind of violation of the First Amendment because it's not a violation of the First Amendment. Nobody is dictating to these teachers what they have to say. They can say whatever they want, but we, the public, and especially the parents, but we, the public, who are supporting these schools with our taxes, but especially the parents, all that happens is they are seeing and hearing and learning what their kids are being taught. And if there's any restrictions on what the teachers are saying, it's self-imposed restrictions because the teachers know that the parents can see and hear what they are doing and maybe that will restrain them from, for instance, teaching their kids to hate the United States. They can see that, for instance, if you want your kid, as I did, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance every morning, then you can see whether they are or not. And I would also add, finally, because there was a teacher who was, I, I, th I think it was on a Twitter feed, but she said flat out, she was a feminist teacher. She was a liberal feminist teacher, and she said that she would never, ever call on a boy. You know, you have a question, you raise your hand. The teacher asks a question, you raise your hand to answer. Obviously, you want to participate. You want your kids participating, but this teacher said that she would never call on a boy. So if you are the parent of a boy, you definitely want to be able to watch the class and see if the boys are being called on, see if they're being treated equally with the girls, see if they are being accommodated for being different from girls, for being more active, that it's okay if they fidget in their seats a little bit more than girls because they're not girls. There is an accusation, and I believe it's true, that a lot of teachers, especially these feminist teachers, are treating boys as defective girls and trying to get them to behave like girls. I have also read that a number of schools are not having playground anymore. They're not having the kids have an hour to go out and play during the day, which I don't know. Maybe that's okay for a girl. 
I was a boy at one time. I know that would drive me crazy. I have read, well, I'm sure you've seen stories of, for instance, a kid, one kid, he took a, he had a Pop-Tart and he made it in the shape of a gun and he was suspended. There was, a, well, it bothers me because I used to be, when I was a kid uh, in school, I used to, I live, well, I do now. I mean, I own a couple of guns, but in those days, I liked cowboys and Indians. You saw cowboys and Indians on TV. It wasn't politically incorrect to play cowboys and Indians. And I used to, you know, do that, pretend I was uh, holding a gun and shooting somebody in school when I was, you know, five or six years old. I remember I used to take a, I don't have one on me right now, but I would take a pen and I would put the pen in there and I would, you know, pretend it's a, a gun. And that's just normal growing up. I didn't turn into a mass murderer. Well, I haven't turned into a mass murderer yet. Time will tell, I suppose. But my point is that you don't suspend a kid for that, especially a boy. You do not suspend or punish a boy for that. And if that is happening, the parents have a right to see that. All I'm saying is that parents have a right to know what the teachers who may be spending more time with your kids than you are you have a right to know what they're doing. You have a right to know what your kids are being taught. And if your kids are being taught to hate this country, you have a right to know. So you can take your kids out of that school and put them in a better school. That's my solution. Just let the parents know what their kids are doing. And I guess I'll just end there. Thanks as always for stopping by. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with anybody you think would also like the video. You can put comments, questions, suggestions for future topics in the space below the video. I would love to have more subscribers, so subscribe if you could, please. And most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.